The following program is paid for by DeFalco Advertising and does not represent views and opinions of WCGV. The following may contain harsh language, poorly communicated ideas, and does not reflect the opinions of iHeartRadio. Hello friends and enemies, it is I and Sean, Take Two Plus, the orchestrators of weekly film reviews. Endless sadness. We like to share the sadness. We bring the sadness onto you, the listener. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in keeping with that theme, this week's movie The Sadness. We are watching, uh, well, okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Take Two Plus. This week, we are looking at Pig, the 2021. Uh, cultural sensation seemingly everyone seems to be obsessed about pigs and pig like things do you know actually that if you spell pig backwards it's gip this episode a very special episode the pig episode is brought to you by um the bear boy and this is a bear uh, boy that dresses up and will uh help you with groceries if you need to buy groceries uh he'll help you carry them he um, works very limited hours, so call the bear boy. Okay, uh, we are talking about pig, and I think the first thing out of the uh, out of first thing out of the box is we're going to be talking pig. about the yeah. shut up. We're going to be talking about the John Wick comparisons because what's going on? Pig's biggest issue, whether you like the film or not, is that its advertising campaign had like this level of expectation that did not match the reality of the film. And the issue is, is that the advertising campaign basically made the movie look like John Wick with a pig or something with Nicolas Cage. They took his pig and now he's pissed. Yeah. You know what? To the film's, I guess, somewhat credit, the first act kind of does follow that formula. They killed his dog and now he's pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, there's even a big like action. Well, not really big action scene, but, you know, Nick Cage gets his ass kicked at the end of the first act. And then everything that follows is a character-driven, dramatic, you know, sentimental film that's, while very interesting, I found it very interesting, is still not the film I was expecting to see. it wasn't very good. It is surprising to see all of the high acclaim, the the critical praise for this film. Uh, (laughs) On Rotten Tomatoes, I think it might be still in the 90s. Uh, it's at 97 percent right now yeah, with, like, 126, like with 126 critical reviews. Um, yeah, but that's that's of course Sean. What what does that actually mean? That means that 60 percent of critics, sorry, 97 percent, 97 percent of critics gave it a 60 percent or higher. Yes, uh, yeah, that's true. It doesn't necessarily mean they love the film. That's true. Yeah, very like, misleading. That's, that's the thing with Rotten Tomatoes is like 97 percent on Rotten Tomatoes is a very specific thing. That is that is only specific to Rotten Tomatoes. You can't yeah. judge a film based upon whether or not a, a Rotten Tomato score is high because it could just mean that a lot of people think this film is very, very average. Now, I think Pig is better than average. You seem to think it's worse than average, but I can see- No, that. I think it is. I think it is average and that's worse than average. So now it's below average. <laughs> So it's like the chapter. It's like, why? Why do that? Well, I don't. Do you, I mean, you never saw the Hannibal TV series, but it reminded me a oh, lot of God that a little bit because in that TV series, they would use like the titles of the episodes would be named after courses, the yeah. and then uh, they would also course use, one. They would use a lot of cutaways of just this like gorgeous looking food in terms of like moving from scene to scene. And there's a little bit of that vibe here because there is definitely a darkness to this film. Like there's like this hidden seedy layer of, of the Portland cooking scene that they kind of expand oh, upon. Oh, so scene. realistic. Right? Fictional effect. Yeah, it's fictional. It's like, effect. you know what? Like no one's talking and like everyone's like, it's just supposedly everyone just knows what's happening. And then like to earn their respect, he has to get beaten up for 60 seconds. It's like, if they actually did like him and respect him, like what? Like, what's this movie? Like, <laughs> it's just so stupid. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a bit of a mistaken identity too at first for a while, right? No one knows who he is except for that kid who he's following, who's following him around. Like, well, it takes everyone, and that just and, gets played out over and over again. <gasps> yeah. Jacques Rappler. 
but that those are I all thought, like but how those are all aspects of like the the john wick that formula that yeah, exactly they get and superimpose yes, yes. onto this film like they you know this hidden or this like legendary uh former figure of this scene that is he was the best they say and the underground uh underground like culture cooking culture in portland is very much like the the hotel in 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 john wick and all of, like how the assassins have their own currency and their underground lingo yeah, and all of this it's stuff. hilarious the parallels are endless drama this is definitely more in like the introspective drama there's a bit of comedy in here but it's not like the parallels are endless it's not really a dark comedy they're not playing it for laughs the parallels are endless the parallels are endless the parallels are i endless. almost think at times it is because the parallels are I've read endless. interviews with him in this character and he talks about how like the like the guy doesn't talk a lot because he comes <clears throat> You know, from not having had to talk a lot. Well, no, that's a, that's stuff. actually the opposite because yeah. as a chef, you are basically losing your voice from the amount of uh, no, but yelling like and stuff. This man has been in hiding for seven or eight years or whatever. Yes, but what I'm saying is that is a skill that you just simply cannot lose over ten years, whatever. How long is it? Fifteen years. It's not that he loses it because he obviously doesn't lose it. He's still able to communicate. Very, but, very like, but but not but not effectively. And if so he don't do something for a very long extended period of time. Dude, no, talking, no, I don't think so. You know what? I don't think so. It just didn't ring true to me, and, and especially because kitchen workers, I mean, they're all the same. They're just like it's just like there's a culture, and it none of it. It just, it didn't even, it well, didn't even do guy. that right. It didn't even get the kitchen culture right. It was trying to do John Wick stuff. At what point did you realize that it wasn't going to be what you thought it was? I had hope for this movie the entire time. I'm like, maybe it'll turn around. Maybe it'll do something and it doesn't. And and it's just anticlimactic. It's... Uh... I, don't, I don't agree with that. Like, I find that the movie, it, it does a really good job with, with its relationships to the characters. I find his relationship with um the actor um, so I'm just, oh, alex wolf like i i thought i felt he was the actual star of the film well, he was my the favorite part the relationship was kind of like the star of the film i think them kind of like him kind of gradually and very slowly pulling nicholas cage out of some type of shell but also nicholas cage taking on like a ment like a kind of mentorship role with this kid who obviously has a terrible father figure in his life and like a difficult relationship with his dad yeah. but i think even the question of that father who i think they the, i can't remember the actor's name who played the father but he very did. reminiscent though of that russian father do you realize why he breaks down the way he does when after nicholas cage cooks him that meal does it remind him of his wife or something well it doesn't just remind him of his wife remember because that what nicholas cage says after is i remember every single customer i've ever cooked every meal i've ever made for them very that's, very that's, the stupid. Ma uh, that's the meal that he made for he and his wife when like like the one happy memory yeah. that alex Walt and i will say that that is actually true that food can actually do that that can take food yeah, can exactly. take you back to a time and a place very easily what are people seeing that i'm not seeing sean in, in his performance i can tell you what he said about it like i have like a quote here from him no but what are people why are people calling it such a revolutionary performance because i i, I don't, don't see think it like they're that. saying it's a revel <laughs> it's a good performance i don't think it's like an academy award-winning performance or anything like that like it, it's just it's a really solid good. one like i don't know why he wasn't cleaning himself at all like was he trying to make a point about being bloodied and being disgusting like was he trying to go out of his way to just like they never he... really talk to you about what happened to him or like they never really specifically come out and say it but like by the way he's listening to that tape of a woman speaking you 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 kind of infer that he's lost somebody that he was married to or had a relationship with and he's just decided that rather than really face it he's just decided to give up on life and head off into the woods and just fucking die basically like you know he does what he needs to do to survive and that's it uh, and spoilers, everybody, it turns out that he actually didn't need the pig after all the final truffles. You see the trees <laughs> tell him um, where He's the, the pig. Truffles. He is the pig. Like in Well, the he looks the like the pig, certainly. Yeah. And, um, uh... The trials and opponents progress as they climb up the ladder. That is just classic. Uh, they become more serious. The, the, the stakes become higher until the ultimate uh, the turns out to be the one closest to him. The... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was very, again, and that's a very John Wick thing. That's what happens in fucking John Wick as well, basically, right? You know what it does? Instead of, like, having a gunfight like it is in John Wick, what it does in Pig is, like, he starts 
attacking people with his words. Like he just, he sizes people up and he knows what their weaknesses and he starts talking to them about that and he starts making them feel emotions and shit. Because it happens like twice in a couple of different conversations towards the second part of the film, including with the father and the son. Like he just yeah. dismantles them in that way. And I think that the confrontation with the father is a climax. And like at the well, perspective, if you're appreciating the... the emotion behind it. Right. Later on, the third act is the dish that he makes for um, the father. Mm -hmm. It's the same dish with the salted baguette yeah. and like the chicken. I think that was probably the climax <laughs> for me was just like when he when he succumbs to the brilliance of his cuisine. Yeah, th I think that was a great moment. I actually like when he breaks down after eating that meal and then he conv and then he admits and the pig is dead, like and the pig has yeah. always been dead. Like it's it's a it's a, it's an emotional moment. She died. I think Nick Cage does it great. I think like the way he's devastated when he learns that the pig is dead, like, and he just falls to his knees. And like, I think that's a honest and true moment. And like Nick Cage kills it. I mean, maybe it helps that they cut to no audio. It's just allowed it to be complete in like the color audio. Uh, but his, his, his dramatics. I don't know. Wails. I don't know. Maybe he's wailing. I yeah. <laughs> it, it seemed, it seemed just like, um, they cut it out immediately. But, you know, they also could have told Nick, you know what, we're just going to cut out the audio regardless and so just do whatever you want at this moment because we're going to go to a very, like, yeah, we're, we're just going to let your performance film. speak for itself, your physical body speak for itself. <laughs> because no one no one can quite capture the physicality of acting quite like Nicolas Cage can mm. in this day age. Right. Anyway, like, ultimately, like, what, should we do Dirty Tarantino Toast then? Like, I what, don't know. Uh, did you like the movie? You liked it? What would you rate it? I did. Um, yeah. Dirty, Dirty Tarantino, Tarantino Toast. Toast. I give it a seven. I give it a seven. Oh, years. really? Wow. And uh, where did it lose the toes, Sean? My views of it, like my viewing of it, was kind of off kilter, and that does hurt the film. Like I was expecting it to be something else, and it didn't live up to that in any regard. While trying to also still remain tied to it in the first place, it was just a weird viewing. Like I, I like the film. I like Nick Cage's performance. I think the relationship between him and the, and Wolf's character is really interesting. I just ultimately don't think it came together as something truly meaningful. Yeah, so yeah. I think it is the kind of film you it gets will probably get better with a, a repeat viewing. Really, especially now that I won't have the same level of expectation going into it this uh, the second time in terms of like tying it into it like an action genre or something mm -hmm. like that. How yeah, many that's... toes do you give it, Ooh, Chris? Sean, thank you. I I don't know. I probably a five out of ten. That's low, man. That's low. No, All right. It's actually just like it's just neither good yeah. nor bad. I don't know, I, but it is a good movie. I think you. I think if you rewatch this movie in a couple of years, you'll like it a lot more. I don't know why it, it takes itself so seriously. It. That's the thing. The silly movie, <laughs> kind of, and yeah. it takes itself so seriously. Do you want to hear a quote of Nicolas Cage comparing himself to the character in Pig in uh, real life? Yeah, a hundred percent. So he was saying. Um, I do feel that I've gone into my own wilderness and that I've left the small town that is Hollywood. I don't know exactly why Rob left his stardom. It's never fully explained. And I like that about the movie. But as for me, I don't know if I'd want to go back. I don't know if I'd want to go and make another Disney movie. It would be terrifying. It's a whole different climate. There's a lot of fear in there. That's what he said about like, making like big really Hollywood gonna, movies. He sounds like he's really to do something. Mm -hmm. Was it a good ending? in what like in terms of what in terms of like the pig being dead like well uh, no in know. terms of the movie being over and you've been like <laughs> okay yeah i felt i felt i like now know thing. exactly what happens and i could either like the ending as being a kind of anticlimactic deal or i would wanted to see my pound of flesh you know on the i think that i it wrapped up the story it was trying to tell in a compelling fashion for me i don't feel like it left me with too many questions and any questions that i did have i'm willing to leave left unanswered or Big two. Contemplate. <laughs> but like i just like you know when he's sitting there at the end of the film just uh in his back in his cabin by himself and then he like looks up i feel like that does suggest some type of grace or if you're reading into it some type of like spiritual trilogy thing, thing that's or working, he, or like, like, the second one he gets back is he gets he goes back you know. to the city uh is so he does he twice. love the pig or is he in love with the pig? <laughs> he loves the pig. He's not like it's not a romantic love like the joke suggests. Like it's like you know he loves the pig because it loves him unconditional. It's unconditional love. Right. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, but what I'm saying yeah. is, lots of people have that relationship with animals, all sorts of pets. But uh, it seems like this was a very 
strangely uh, <laughs> meaningful relationship. Erotic? I don't know what you Honestly, you're they at. make such a point of like the sexual BCL oh, level. It I, makes I, me I, think I, that there was probably some sort of uh, relationship I, with Nicolas you know Cage. What? Pig. It is Nicolas Cage, so. You know what? He's like, you know what? We'll leave it. We'll leave the mystery. We'll, we'll, we'll keep them guessing for pick two. We'll even, we'll even reference it as a joke so that they think about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't fuck my pig.